I'm Victoria and this is the Elite Medical Prep YouTube channel. Today we are talking about everything pathology residency. Well, not everything, but whatever we can fit into a 10 minute video. Maybe a little bit less. And we're going to be interviewing our wonderful Elite Medical Prep tutor, Carolina. Um, she's a current pathology resident at Duke. Um, and to talk a little bit about her background, she obtained her undergraduate degree from Brown University in 2013 and her MD and PhD degrees from Duke University. Her PhD research focused on brain tumor immunotherapy, specifically T-cell exhaustion and glioblastoma. During her graduate studies, she also received the Paul and Lauren Garafi Graduate Fellowship and was invited speaker for the Rising Star Lecture Series sponsored by the NIH Intramural Residency Program. She currently serves as an ad hoc reviewer for cancer medicine. medicine. She's a mom and, of course, our beloved USMLE tutor at Elite Medical Prep. So, let's give her a call. Hi, Carolina. Hi, Victoria. How are you? I'm really well. How are you? Good. In the middle of my lunch break. Awesome. Okay, and where are you right now so that our viewers know what's going on? So, I'm at Duke University um, in my at my desk, we have little carols that we sit at um, with our microscopes. Um, so here I am. So you are in pathology residency, and I'm That's really correct. curious, just walk me through the whole entire experience from what made you choose pathology to how you settled upon Duke, just the whole entire thing, any disaster interviews, whatever it might be interesting uh, or that people might be curious about. So pathology is a really great specialty. It allows you to really focus on the basic aspects of disease. You spend a lot of time uh, trying to understand what the pathology is in a patient and it's really important for patient care to make sure that you have the right diagnosis. Um, you know, sometimes you might think based on imaging that it's one type of cancer, but then when you look at the tissue, it's a different type of cancer and it can really change how patients are managed. Um, so for me, that was a really important aspect of pathology um, and it allowed me to really contribute to patient care while also being able to focus more on the basic aspects of disease. Uh, which was important for me um, because I have a PhD and I really wanted to focus on research and um, basic aspects of pathology. Um, and so for me, my research is focused on brain tumors and immunotherapy. And so with pathology, I'll be able to, be able to focus on neuropathology and really kind of delve into uh, how brain tumors work and how they function and you can really get a sense for that uh, through the slides. Um, another important aspect for me was the flexible schedule. Um, because it's not a patient care-based specialty, you don't have to be in clinic from eight to six. You just kind of get your work for the day and however long it takes you to get through your stack of slides, that's how long your day is. Uh, so for me, that was really important, not only for incorporating research, but also for being a mom and being able to be home with my kids um, for a large you know, portion of the day. Um, and so I decided on that during my PhD. And then during my fourth year, I really just focused on a couple of programs. I knew I wanted to stay at Duke um, because of my research was here and, and for family reasons as well. So it was really an easy interview season. I only interviewed um, here and at one other program. Um, so there wasn't too much travel or anything involved with that. Um, and uh, the other program that I interviewed at was just kind of for fun and I got to meet a bunch of people that are really interesting and perhaps in the future I might consider um, relocating. Um, but in terms of the interviews, it was very low stress. Pathologists are very friendly. There weren't any crazy questions or anything. So the interviews were pretty, pretty smooth and pretty easy. Um, and then on match day, um, since I kind of already knew what was going to happen, I was out on the beach of North Carolina with my family. We were actually like in a very remote part where you have to take a boat to get out to the beach. You can't even drive there because it's on an island. Um, but the service was actually really good on my phone. So I checked my email right at 12. <laughs> Whoa, so you, you found out that you were accepted to Duke residency for pathology on an island. <laughs> island, that's right, that's yeah. Awesome on a beach um, and then I got the call from the 
program director shortly thereafter and so you could kind of he was like where are you because you could hear the wind and the waves and everything and so <laughs> That's that's awesome. That's an awesome way to find out such good news. <laughs> cool. Okay, well, I have one other question is that so now that you're in pathology residency and you you mentioned that there were a couple different factors, the flexibility of the schedule, um, your mom, that's amazing. Um, so my question to you then is what did you expect pathology residency to be like and what is it actually like is there anything that was really surprising or that you felt like whoa i just wasn't expecting this um pleasant unpleasant we want to hear it <laughs> yeah so i was fortunate because i did a rotation here um, already before i matched here so i kind of knew what to expect from talking all to the residents and being there and doing the work but I think the most surprising thing for me was really how quickly you learn when you're responsible for the cases. When I was a medical student, you know, people were, we were looking through the microscope and I was kind of just, you know, shadowing and following along. And a lot of it was very overwhelming. So I knew that I would be overwhelmed in residency with all the details you have to know about all the histology and all the genetic things that you need to know. Um, but when you're the one previewing the cases and then signing out, um, you, you definitely pick it up faster than I thought you would. Like it wasn't as um, overwhelming as I thought it would be, which is actually a good thing. Definitely. And if, if you could go back, is there anything that you would have done differently or, I mean, how was the whole process for you overall? I wouldn't do anything differently. I really think that it worked out really well. Um, I don't have any complaints or any anything. Like I think it was a good way to do it. Um, I think <clears throat> moving forward and thinking about you know a faculty job, I think it is important to kind of apply broadly um, because you kind of need to meet people and network. And even if you don't really want to go to a place, if you meet somebody there that can you know, help you along, that's definitely something to consider. But I think at the early stage going into residency, just focusing on the programs that you're really interested in applying to is probably the best use of your time. Awesome. So that segues nicely into my last question for you. I know we won't keep you too long. You've got to get back to everything that's going on. But um, we know that you wrote a really awesome blog post about what it takes to apply into pathology and successfully be accepted. And we're going to link that right here on the screen for everyone. Um, but other than what's written there, which is kind of the basic scores that you need, um, letters of recommendation, these kind of things, do you have any other key pieces of advice for people that are interested in applying into pathology? really important to do rotations in pathology because there's so many varied aspects. Um, you know, I didn't even realize that uh, people can focus in forensics or in heme or cyto. There are so many different areas. And so as a medical student, if you can gain exposure to any of those areas at your home institution or at away rotations, I think that uh, really provides um, a great experience, not only for you as a student, but also it makes your application look a lot stronger. Okay, that's great advice. Um, well, thank you so much for your time, um, and we look forward to talking with you again. All right, thanks, Victoria. Let us know in the comments um, if you have anything else that you're curious about us asking Carolina. Um, we'd be happy to make a follow-up video, so just let us know.